Hello, I am Dr. Dina Gonzalez, Gonzaga University's Provost, and it is my privilege to welcome you all to the University's 127th commencement. On behalf of the University, thank you to our graduates and their families and friends for joining us for a public celebration of our students' achievements. We have more than 1,250 graduating seniors and over 800 masters, law, and doctoral students to honor this weekend. Your support has aided these graduates as they work to complete this step of their educational journeys. This is indeed a day to celebrate, not only for our graduates, but for all of us. We begin our program today in honor of the Native ancestors who walk this earth across many generations. The honoring will be followed by an invocation and then the singing of our national anthem. I am pleased to welcome Wendy Thompson, Director of Tribal Relations, for a land acknowledgement. In the spirit of the Jesuit practice of composition of place, we acknowledge that Gonzaga University resides on the homelands of the Spokane tribal people. This land holds the cultural DNA and the spirit of the first people of this place, the people of the river. It is their ancestors who are here and bring forth the power of this place, the knowledge that comes from the land. We are grateful to be on this land and ask for its support as we work to manifest our intentions during this gathering of hearts, minds, and spirits. Thank you, Ms. Thompson. It is now my pleasure to introduce Father Brian Pham of the Society of Jesus. Loving and gracious God, we give you thanks for our graduates who have successfully completed their education here at Gonzaga University. As they move on to the next stage of their lives, we ask your blessings be upon them. In the spirit of St. Aloysius Gonzaga, we pray that our graduates may always be professional, competent, and compassionate, loyal to their promises, and responsive to the world's need for social justice. May they be the voice for the voiceless. We pray that you give our graduates the inner strength, compassion, and conviction needed to freely and responsibly make difficult and challenging decisions. May they understand and apply their knowledge creatively and with integrity. And may they employ these skills in a critical and proactive manner. May our graduates understand that the option for justice and solidarity with and for others implies the rejections of violence, vengeance, and intolerance as much as the rejection of any kind of discrimination or division that dehumanizes our human family. As our graduates move into the next chapter of their journey, may they always be the embodiment of the spirits of gratitude, hope, and joy. And in the spirit of St. Ignatius of Loyola, may our graduates become men and women for and with others, thus transforming the world with a passion and faith that does justice. We bring these prayers to you, trusting in the love and mercy that you have given us. Through Christ our Lord, amen.
Thank you, Father Pham, for the invocation. And thank you to Gonzaga's a cappella group, The Big Bing Theory, for leading us in the Star Spangled Banner. It is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Thane McCullough, Gonzaga University's 26th president. His academic discipline is psychology. He received his bachelor's degree from Gonzaga University and his doctor of philosophy degree from Oxford University. President McCullough has served Gonzaga University in numerous positions over his three decades of professional engagement with the university. A nationally recognized leader in Jesuit higher education, Dr. McCullough brings to the role of president extensive knowledge and skill and a passionate commitment to the mission of educating whole persons while exploring opportunities in Jesuit Catholic and humanistic traditions, including linking social justice with equity and accessibility. Please join me in welcoming Gonzaga University President, Dr. Thane McCullough. Provost and Senior Vice President, Dr. Dina Gonzalez, our distinguished honoree and speaker, Fawn Sharp, President, Quinault Indian Nation. Members of the faculty, administrators, distinguished family members, and honored guests. And most especially, the graduates of Gonzaga's graduate programs and School of Law, class of 2020. What a privilege it is to be with you today. Today is a day for reflection, for expressing our gratitude, giving thanks, and for celebrating success. Today, graduates of the class of 2020, we recognize the remarkable achievements that have led to the granting of your master's, law, and doctoral degrees. I believe I can speak for all of us when I say that the completion of the 2019-2020 academic year was not what any of us anticipated. But just as you always have, you have exemplified what it means to be a Gonzaga student, taking on the seemingly insurmountable challenge of the COVID-19 pandemic with understanding and with grace. On behalf of all of us at Gonzaga University, thank you for your willingness and dedication to finishing your career as Gonzaga students with such fortitude. It was nothing short of extraordinary to witness firsthand how tremendously courageous you all have been in the face of circumstances that none of us have ever borne witness to before. From the day you began your program, I can imagine that you all envisioned what arriving at this moment of commencement would be like. Crossing the stage, smiling proudly for photos, gathering with family and friends to celebrate this tremendous achievement. Even though we cannot gather together as we have in years past, I hope that today's ceremony still brings you the feelings of nostalgia and achievement from your time at Gonzaga, as well as pride for what you have achieved as Zags. Your degree today is conferred upon you by a Jesuit university, an educational institution based in a tradition of learning now more than 486 years in the making, a tradition that has relied upon the importance of reflection as an essential element of true learning. So let us reflect together on the meaning of this moment. Some of you entered graduate and law school immediately following your undergraduate work, but some of you did so having first spent time entering the professional world, gaining hands-on practical experience. Many of you watching this ceremony are surrounded by spouses, daughters, or sons 
and extended family, all of whom are joining together to celebrate your accomplishments. They know better than most what sacrifices you have made to get to this point in your life and your career. You may be aware that I myself am a proud alum of Gonzaga University. As such, I take immense pride in the educational experiences afforded to me as an undergraduate. The depth and breadth of my undergraduate experience prepared me well for the academic rigors of graduate school. But I must admit to you, today as I look back on my graduate school experience, it was one of the most trying periods of my adult life. Acknowledging the practical reality that I was pursuing my graduate studies in a foreign country as well, I clearly remember the frustrations which came with having to constantly juggle time for my studies and research with the demands of family, an often unfulfilled desire to maintain friendships, and working to make ends meet. While the details may be different for you, I have no doubt that you have experienced similar struggles, frustrations, and moments of experienced failure along the path of your own lives and educational journeys. Of course, this experienced reality not only makes today's accomplishment a sweeter celebration, it underscores the point that achievement is measured in no small part by the nature of the adversity one has endured along the way. Indeed, if your education at Gonzaga has been truly successful, you now understand at a deep level that learning often emerges from situations and opportunities we might least expect. In fact, I am certain the application of your learning in your personal, professional, and communal lives will be most fruitfully applied in the least predictable occasions, times, and places. Graduations mark transitions, and that means change. And change is often embedded in fear. But transitions, like graduations, are at their heart also about hope. You, our graduates, go forth today with the unquenchable hope that emerges from the practical tools that make you competent and capable, the innovative thoughts that will solve real problems, and the human and humane values that will sustain you in times of trial. The Jesuit concept of the magis, the even more, that which makes things add up to more than the sum of their parts. This exists only in the context of hope. Because without it, doing more, being more, creating more is simply not achievable. The Jesuit tradition insists that we be people of hope, bringers of hope to a flawed world. Hope is what makes imagining a better future possible. You, our graduates, are the ones who will define the future we all will experience and share. And so on this day, you fill us with hope. And that alone is worthy of celebration. It is with sincere appreciation for the sacrifices you and those who love and have supported you have made that I join with my colleagues in congratulating you. As you go forth from this day, I hope you carry these thoughts with you. In your dreams and aspirations, you carry the hopes and the dreams of this university we will miss you, but we look forward to celebrating your many achievements to come 
with you. Without question, you will each find opportunities for success and achievement in your future work. Take time to nourish your heart and your faith along the way. Wherever you go in this life and whatever good works you choose to pursue, know that God's Holy Spirit is upon you now and will remain with you forever. You have been a gift to us, you inspire us, and we are grateful to have been with you on this part of your journey. It has been my honor to serve as your president, for it allows me this day on behalf of the entire Gonzaga University community to wish you all the best and Godspeed. Congratulations to the class of 2020. Today's honoree has served in many leadership roles to help protect the rights of Native Americans, addressing issues ranging from climate change responses to sovereignty issues. She has followed in the footsteps of tribal leaders who dedicated themselves to improving lives of those who call the Quinault Indian Nation their community. In carrying forward this work and in true collaboration with leaders of Washington State, she has helped to guide, to build, the economy of the Grays Harbor region while protecting and restoring the natural environment of the Olympic Peninsula. President Fawn Sharp graduated with a Bachelor of Arts from Gonzaga University and a Juris Doctorate from the University of Washington and has achieved certificates from the National Judicial College in Nevada as well as the International Human Rights Law from Oxford University. She conducts lectures across the United States and writes publications to contribute to the education of others. For her commitment to bringing hope and promise to the Quinault people and all Indian nations, Gonzaga is grateful and proud to honor our sister Fawn Sharp on this day with a degree, Doctor of Laws, Honoris Causa. Congratulations and thank you for addressing the class of 2020. Oak Yuhuch, class of 2020, Anzjak Haiwishka, Siokwil. On behalf of the entire Gonzaga community, congratulations. We are so incredibly happy for you in this milestone and accomplishment. And to the friends, family, mentors, teachers throughout your lifetime, we also raise our hands and congratulate you as well. We all recognize that individually we are nothing, but with our friends, our family, our teachers, our mentors, our heroes, and our, our, our almighty creator, nothing is impossible and we can accomplish anything that we set our minds to. So our hands are raised. You did it, you made it, congratulations. Now I wanna offer just a few remarks in preparation as you enter that next chapter of your life and that next chapter of service. We all know we are living during unprecedented times. And I would urge you to really consider this moment in time. What we are all facing, we are facing many apocalyptic challenges on many levels. And it's very clear that our creator called us. We are strong, we are prepared, and we are destined for this moment. What we see in the world around us is an incredible imbalance. It's an imbalance that didn't begin just last year or even a decade ago, or even a lifetime ago. The imbalance that we see throughout our world begins centuries ago. If you just look at the world around us, the things that we see with regard to our natural world, our climate, when you look at the social and racial inequities and injustices facing this generation, and when you look at a global pandemic, all of these are symptoms of a much deeper imbalance in our lifetime. But like those who've gone before us, your grandparents, your great grandparents who faced the Great Depression, who faced the civil rights eras, and who faced 
many health care crises and public health care crises, we too are prepared. And we cannot forget that the strength, the resilience, and the resolve that went through their veins during those times, that strengthened them, that provided that fortitude, it's the same thing that runs through your veins. You inherited that legacy of strength. You inherited that legacy of resilience. And you are called upon at this time to face even greater challenges. And together, and with our almighty creator's blessing, grace, and guidance, we too are gonna face these challenges. I also want you to consider not only the world around you, but I want you to consider deep within your heart and within your spirit, that vision, those dreams that you had as a young child. None of us could ever have imagined that the world that we face now was something that we would be destined to do. We all, when we envisioned our future as children, had dreams of big ideas and hopes and, and things that we wanted to accomplish in a very positive way but we are facing some dark times. None of us could have ever imagined the darkness that we are now facing. But like those who've gone before us, we have to recognize that in adversity, there's opportunity. In adversity, there are challenges, and we are well equipped to meet those challenges. So look at, at your life, look at your family, look at the generations that have gone before you, draw upon that strength, because that is what you're destined to do. And as you look around and, and you look at that history and you look at your family and you look at those dreams and those things that stand before you, also recognize that you have a purpose. We all have a unique destiny and purpose that our almighty creator has called us to do. And as long as we pay close attention to what we are called upon to do, we all have a perfect plan, a perfect path, and a perfect timing. And we have to enter life in a way that's respectful, respectful of all those who are around us and respectful of that future that we know is so bright. And as you look at the world around you, and as you look at those that have gone before you, and as you dig deep and look at the hopes and dreams that you had as a young child, know that you are prepared and destined to face these times. We know that this country is facing some incredible challenges, public health challenges, economic challenges, and economic crises, and many are questioning whether this country can stand on those principles and values upon which it was built. We know that there was a president at one time that challenged this country. Can a nation so conceived and so dedicated long endure our country is being tested. There's a great deal of division, but we have to recognize that while there's tremendous division in this country, there is so much more that draws us together. There is so much more that is our common denominator, that is the force of our strength, that can make us that country that those around the world look to with hope, with optimism. And we know that our generation, while we are facing much, we are given much and we have deep hopes and we have dreams that exceed anything that we could possibly imagine. And as long as we are true to those values, as long as we are true to our traditions and the, the values that our beloved Gonzaga University is built upon, we know that we are being trained to face something that is much greater than us. It's much greater than our generation but we are here and we are ready to support you. We are ready to celebrate your success. This is the day, the moment, and the time. You've worked your entire life to prepare. Many have invested hours, days, years into your success. And we know that this is a moment that you can seize, you can stand on that solid foundation of those that have gone before you, your hopes, your dreams, and all those that have paved the way for you. And now is the time to embrace it, to rise above all of the darkness that this world faces and see that, that beacon of light and hope that stands for all of us. We must seize this moment. We must rise to the challenge. And I'm confident that we have prepared you, that Gonzaga has prepared you to meet these challenges. So this is your moment. Seize upon that legacy of strength. Seize upon that legacy of resilience and seize the moment. Rise, soar, and meet today's challenges. See you quill.
Thank you, President Sharp, for your moving and important remarks. Each year, we invite one of our graduates to speak to the commencement audience. This year's graduate student speaker is an advocate for women's empowerment and diversity and inclusion. After graduating from the third oldest public high school in Baltimore, Maryland, she achieved a Bachelor of Science in Clinical Exercise Science from Ithaca College, and during that time, decided to pursue a growing interest in communications. She began a lifestyle blog and plans to utilize her Gonzaga University Master of Arts in Communication and Leadership program experience to pursue a career in public relations. Please welcome Kristen Miller. Hello, class of 2020. Congratulations, my fellow graduates, on this academic achievement. We have made it through our respective degree program, but more importantly, we are surviving the coronavirus pandemic. With us surviving COVID-19, I think we are more than able to handle anything life throws at us. I know you are anxiously waiting to receive that special piece of paper that we have all worked so hard to get. The piece of paper that makes all the sleepless nights, discussion board peer responses, competing deadlines, and sacrifices all worth it. But before that, I'd like to leave you with just three things to remember as you conclude this chapter in your life and embark on a new one. Adversity is necessary. The world is your new classroom and your teachers are those around you. Forever a zag, more than a network, more like a family. Throughout our lifetime, we have experienced adversity in some form. It is inevitable. Adversity functions to build character, promotes learning, fosters creativity, and elicits conviction to germinate. World-renowned singer Beyonce Knowles says, if everything was perfect, you would never learn and you would never grow. Adversity is not uniform in appearance. It has many faces. The international student battling a language barrier, trying to comprehend subject matter and produce scholar-level coursework in a foreign language. The student who is trying to balance a full-time job, a spouse, children, and a social life. The student who is battling a chronic illness which forces them to miss time from school. Adversity is inevitable, but resilience is optional. Despite the hardship you face, you have exemplified resilience being here today. You have overcome those obstacles designed to slow you down and stop you from reaching your goals. In the process, you have grown on a personal, professional, and academic level. Although it made the journey tough, it was necessary to transform you into the person sitting before me. So take things as they come and know that both the good and bad are equally important in shaping you into who you are and who you will be. As Dory from the animated film Finding Nemo says, just keep swimming. As we transition out of a traditional school setting with structured lessons taught by some of the most qualified and decorated individuals, we will shift focus to learning from those around us. This brings me to my second point. The world is your new classroom and your teachers are those around you. You can learn so much from those you surround yourself with. Interacting with people of different race, ethnicity, sexuality, socioeconomic status, and religion enables you to think in different ways and see the world from a different perspective. Stepping outside your own ethnocentrism challenges your thought process and expands the way you process information. Something I learned from taking international and intercultural communication taught by Professor Dave Hoglum. Every new experience, new environment, new encounter brings a new perspective. With that being said, look at the way you learn from a different lens. In this chapter, we are beginning. There will still be tests and quizzes, not necessarily multiple choice or fill in the blank, but situations that require you to apply the skills and concepts you have acquired on this journey. There will be required reading that does not take the form of a textbook that you get from Zagshop, but maybe an article, manual, or book that will help you expand your skills to flourish in your respective career. There will even be deadlines that won't be Sunday at 11.59 to Blackboard, Professor Josh Meisner's favorite, but have it on my desk by next week. Our academic journey is not dependent on a connection to an institution of higher learning, but connected to our experiences we have on a daily basis. Your classroom is what you make it. And finally, 
you are forever a Zag. From the moment you decided to attend Gonzaga University, you became part of a network of more than 100,000 people. You have access to a network of alumni, faculty, staff, students. This concept is illustrated through the African proverb, it takes a village to raise a child, which means an entire community of people must interact with children for those children to experience and grow in a safe and healthy environment. Although we are far from children, it takes a collective effort to get you to where you want to go. Networking is vital in creating new opportunities for professional devel development. However, the core of networking is to build long-term relationships. Truly getting to know people. As a non-traditional student, I had a fear of lack of connection. I would ask myself, how will I make friends online? How will I connect with professors through a screen? How will I form a connection to a school I won't physically be at? Well, let's just say everything I once doubted is possible. I have a pretty stellar group of friends, shout out to my OG Zag family, a group of brilliant and supportive individuals who have pushed me to be the best version of myself, not allowing me to settle for mediocrity. I have connected with professors in and outside the digital classroom, even meeting up for dinner all the way in Baltimore, Maryland, my hometown. And as far as the connection to GU, the inventory of GU apparel I have in my closet could give the Zag shop a run for their money. So I think it's safe to say I'm a little attached. As you venture out into the world, remember, adversity is necessary. The world is your new classroom and your teachers are those around you. You are forever a Zag. Know that you are never alone because you are a part of a family of people who genuinely want you to succeed and are willing to play their part in your success. Embrace your family and know that we are all here rooting for you. Class of 2020, we made it. Thank you, Kristen. We wish you well in your next stage and in your career. Our next speaker plans to practice law in Spokane now that he has graduated. After attending a Jesuit high school in Ohio, he received a football scholarship and achieved a degree in psychology and business from Duquesne University while playing four years as a defensive end. An active member of the Student Bar Association in the Gonzaga Law School, he also worked for the school's legal assistance program in the areas of elder law and federal taxation. Please welcome Gonzaga Law School graduate Dane O'Driscoll. Good morning to the class of 2020, faculty and staff, parents, grandparents, aunts and uncles, friends, and random people who just decided to tune in or receive the wrong Zoom link. Thank you for watching. Wherever you may be watching this, I hope you and your loved ones are doing well and staying safe. Before I begin my very long and in-depth speech, which will take me anywhere from 40 to 50 minutes, about my struggles and hardships throughout law school, I'd first like to give a special shout out and thanks to certain individuals who without their help, love and support, I would not be here today. Additionally, I'd like to extend these special thanks to anyone and everyone who may have participated in the success of my classmates during their time at Gonzaga, whether family, friends, or significant others. Today is your day just as much as it is ours. So first, my mom and dad, thank you for all the hard work you did to get me to where I am today. I'm very lucky to have you both as my parents. You both pushed me constantly to be a better version of myself. Thank you for your unconditional love. I am truly grateful. Second, to my siblings, Molly, Kelsey, and Zachary. Thank you for taking my midnight stressed phone calls and listening to my vent sessions. I'm thankful for all of you. Next, my girlfriend, Nora. Thank you for your love and support these past six years. I'm very lucky to have you in my life. Fourth, to my friends. You know who you are. Thank you for everything you did for me. I truly appreciate you all. I will miss our talks, cold called stories, and becoming friends over our common misunderstandings of legal terms such as venue. Thank you. And now, what everyone has been waiting for. 
Well, class of 2020, we did it. Wow, what an anticlimactic ending, huh? I never would have thought it'd end this way. But on the bright side, we are done, finished, it's over. Never again will we have to take midterms. Never again must we download ExamSoft and take a practice test. Never again will we get called upon to recite the legal definitions of adverse possession, mens or actus rea, NIED, or bootstrap authority. Never again. Never again will we get called in Sepinik's contract class. Never again will we use a pass in Gilmer's con law or torts courses. Never again must we stand in Cooling's litigation skills class and recite what reflective and active listening means to 40 plus people at 7.45 in the morning. Never again. And for that, congratulations. Congratulations everyone for getting through the hard and difficult times these past three years that presented us. It indeed was quite the journey and I'm privileged to get the opportunity to speak for us. When preparing this speech, I researched commencement speeches to get ideas. I quickly realized that the perfect speech had already been done by the most famous attorney of our era, L. Woods. So, in true law school fashion, I'd like to quote L. Woods when I say, on our very first day at Gonzaga, a very wise professor quoted Aristotle, the law is reason free from passion. Well, no offense, Aristotle, but in my three years at Gonzaga, I have come to find that passion is a key ingredient to the study and practice of law and of life. It is with passion, courage of conviction, and a strong sense of self that we take our next steps into the world, remembering that first impressions are not always correct. You must always have faith in people, and most importantly, you must always have faith in yourself. Congratulations, class of 2020. We did it. Good, cut. We pause for a moment to thank you, our generous and loving God, for the blessings of this commencement ceremony. We give thanks for the gift of Jesuit higher education. We give thanks for the Gonzaga community gathered to celebrate this milestone event. We are especially grateful for the creative minds and generous hearts of our graduates. And we pray that God's blessing will be upon them as we send them forth. And so for our graduates, we pray. May God bless you and keep you as you pursue new, new journeys and dreams. May you thrive in the love that your family and friends have for you. May you flourish in the delight and confidence that this community has in you. May you continue to grow in wisdom, compassion, and the search for justice. May your hope be a light within you that you carry into each new day. And may you know of our love and care for you as we send you forth and bless you in God's many holy names. Amen. Thank you to the deans for their dedication to academic excellence and student success. The deans who support and host academic programs and services in support of the master's law and doctoral degrees we are conferring today include Dr. Jason Houston of the Satellite Campus Gonzaga in Florence and Dr. Paul Brackey of the Foley Library and Center. As we prepare for the conferral of degrees, let me introduce the academic deans who will host the next segment of today's program for each school. Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences, Dr. Anne Marie Cagno. Dean of the Law School, Dr. Jacob Rooksby. Dean of the School of Business Administration, Dr. Ken Anderson. Dean of the School of Education, Dr. Yolanda Gallardo. Dean of the School of Engineering and Applied Science, Dr. Carleen Hu. Dean of the School of Nursing and Human Physiology, Dr. Vince Salyers, represented today by Dr. Jane Teat, Professor of Nursing. Dean of the School of Leadership Studies, Dr. Rosemarie Hunter. I send thanks to the deans for their dedication to academic excellence and leadership in student success. To our students and guests, 
I ask that you please choose the school ceremonies listed on the website for the next segment of our commencement program and join your Dean for a special tribute to your accomplishments. I will see you again at the close of your school or college segment.